So tell us a little bit about Commissioner's Court and exactly what was done regarding uh, the transfer of funds due to medical expenses. Well, this is a standard request uh, for, for transfer of funds. Obviously, any time that we move funds from one account to another, we do have to take it to court and they vote on it and it gets moved. Uh, this is kind of a unique thing because we're doing it a little bit earlier than what we normally would do that uh, just because of unexpected medical costs in the jail. Yeah, talk a little bit about that and kind of why it is different. What I guess what time of year do you guys usually do these budget transfers and why is now so different? Well, usually they're done at the towards the end of the fiscal year. Uh, you know, we start working on budget a little bit before. Uh, for years go by as far as medical costs, we generally, it's a, it's a best guess. You, you go off what you spent the, the previous year, add a little bit to it, and hope you don't ever exceed it. And generally, we can get through about 90 to 95 percent of the year before we start getting into crunch time. Hey, do we need to move some money around before the fiscal year of October 1st? Uh, this was kind of a unique thing due to one particular inmate. Let's talk a little bit about that. So how much was started out in that budget and kind of how much has now been transferred in for that? Well, I, the, the initial budget we can't really go into, but I can tell you that right now that uh, we're, for the year to date, it's $994,000 yeah. uh, of medical expenditures. Wow, wow. So how much was originally budgeted, you can't say? It, yeah, I don't have those numbers right now. Okay. Um, and then how much, I guess, was transferred in? We transferred 150000 yeah, and then you mentioned one inmate, something happened. Can you yeah. go into that incident? Well, we had a, a, a one inmate that was here on a, on a pretty serious charge. Obviously, we work with the district attorney's office. If we got somebody that comes in on a misdemeanor charge that has uh, what's going to be prolonged medical you know, needs that need to be met, you know, we're not going to keep them in jail for those needs. We'll make sure that they get to the hospital and those needs are taken care of. And then once they're healed up at a later date, we'll try to bring them back to court. With this particular inmate, that wasn't going to be an option. Due to the serious nature of his charge, we weren't going to be able to release him. And he had uh, needs that exceeded even what the hospital was able to provide. And we had to go and get special care for him. There's no contracts in place. So really, we, we had to negotiate the rates. We had to get our lawyers involved to, to try to you know lessen the burden to the taxpayers. But that bill came out to 670 something thousand dollars. Yeah, what actually happened to put him in that state? Can't go into that. Okay, okay. Um, and so, I guess, where is he at now? Can you? Well, I can tell you that particular inmate has already been through the justice system and he has gone through, uh, uh, he's actually in TDC now. Okay, so after all the things, you know, it's just kind of left you guys with a bunch yeah, of money Yeah, yeah, you know, I, after the inmate does, the justice system works, he goes to prison, then the bills start coming in and we, those bills have got to be paid. Yeah, for sure. And so, you know, like you said, it's something that's kind of an odd place to be because you look at what you budgeted from the last time to where you are now and hope that you guys don't go over. So does, is it going to be something that you guys kind of take into consideration moving forward when it comes to budget time? Well, every, every budget year we take medical costs. Um, we're no different than the rest of the public. Medical costs go up every year, sometimes uh, by quite a lot. Um, you know, unfortunately, the inmates that we, we get and that we receive come off the streets for the most part, criminals don't take care of their medical needs. There's oftentimes inmates don't get medical care until they come to the jail and we force them to, to receive the medical care. Uh, and you can't always calculate what that's going to be per inmate. Sometimes they've got undiagnosed medical issues that are not found out until they come here. They're screened upon intake. Uh, they're noticed by our, our medical staff and then we start addressing them immediately. Yeah, and I noticed something else too was the shortages there and kind of partnering with KC in that part of it. Can you kind of talk a little bit about that? Well, the partnering with KC is something new that we're trying to, to lessen the burden on our medical staff. Obviously, we got openings in the jail division. We've got openings in the medical portion of our jail. Uh, we have 24-hour medical that is staffed here at the sheriff's office uh, to provide care to these inmates. So having KC partner with us, that's going to lessen the burden off of our medical staff and it's going to increase training for the college. So hopefully it turns out to be a win-win. But getting people to uh, look at the jail and provide medical care for inmates is not always the easiest uh, recruiting tool. Yeah, for sure. Is there anything else that you feel like is really important for people to know about this budget transfer and kind of why it's a lot different and unique circumstances and kind of why it needed to be done? Well, like I said, uh, we're required uh, to, to make sure that the inmates get the medical care that, that they you know need. Uh, that is a requirement that's put on us by the state. So every inmate comes in here and we just want to reiterate that most of these people do not receive care until they come to the Gregg County Jail. And on some cases, like this one case in particular, we can't walk away from we got to stick with them and 
you know, there's other costs that come into that, not just medical costs, but any times an inmate goes to the hospital, uh, we have to staff that. Uh, generally, it's not done by on-duty personnel. It comes out of an overtime budget, which is separate from medical costs. Uh, so these are all things that come into effect. And like I said, you know, usually we, we try to wait to the end of the year to start moving money around. However, unique situation, and we're already, you know, going through that budget because of one particular inmate, which is not uncommon. We've been in this spot before in years past with a particular inmate that, that requires extensive care.